This video was born from a spark, ignited by a personal experience I had today. I was on the subway, and in front of me were two guys, no more than 20 years old, talking about Linux. I was enjoying listening to them. One was more experienced and used Nobara, the other was a bit more of a beginner and was talking about his experience with Linux Mint, asking for advice. At one point, the guy with Mint said a phrase that literally froze me. In three months, I've never opened the terminal. That phrase triggered something in me. The terminal is our standard, our universal environment. We keep talking about unified interfaces, universal packages, smooth and uniform graphical installers, all designed to bring Linux to the masses. But in reality, the soul of Linux, its quintessence, what makes it a powerful, flexible, and coherent tool, is the terminal. If you want to use Linux, you need to use the terminal, or at least start exploring it, getting to know it, discovering how to get control, power, flexibility, security, customization, advanced automation, because if we forget all this, what are we talking about? The truth is that we've reached the point where we no longer have Linux users. We have Windows users who use Linux. And I say this with extreme sincerity, with a critical but also lucid look, because it leaves me with a deep doubt. On one hand, yes, it's positive to make our ecosystem accessible, to give people the power, security, freedom that Linux allows. But on the other hand, what's really accessible when users interact with GNU Linux as if they were on Windows Vista? I don't know. I really don't know how to answer. Maybe this spread, carried forward by increasingly user-friendly distributions, is a blessing, or maybe not. But that event on the subway made me think, especially about the terminal, its power, its infinite possibilities. For example, I can write in a few seconds a script that checks the status of my system, generates an accurate report, sends it via email from my server, and delivers it to my mailbox. All this in 15 seconds. And this is just a microscopic example. The limit, with the terminal, is only our imagination. The terminal is indispensable for Linux. In fact, I never feel like a stranger using Gen2, Arch, Zorin OS, or any of the over 250 existing distributions, because in the end, regardless of the desktop environment or package manager, the terminal is always there, and with it I do practically everything. I know many of you already know this story, but this video is aimed at a more general audience and I want to tell the story of the terminal to those who don't know it. The modern concept of text terminal was born with the Unix operating system, developed at Bell Labs by Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, and others in 1969. To interact with the system, Thompson created the first shell, a textual command interpreter that allowed users to type commands and receive real-time responses. The Unix shell was the natural evolution of the command line already existing in previous systems like CTSS and Multics. But even before the terminal as we understand it today, that is software. The terminal was a physical device. These were teletypes or TTYs, electric typewriters connected by cable to mainframes. Users typed commands and the machine printed the response. With Unix, the concept of virtual TTY was introduced. That is, textual terminals managed in software but which retained the same logic. Even today, in fact, the terminal is called TTY, and we see it in Linux systems as slash dev slash TTY. Who created the modern terminal? The software terminal we use today is a direct evolution of the Unix shell. Among the most important, Esh, the first Unix shell, written by Ken Thompson. Bash, the born again shell, written by Brian Fox for the GNU project in 1989. Today, one of the most used in the world. Fish, more modern, interactive, and customizable shells, born in the 90s and 2000s. And graphical terminals? In the 90s, with the arrival of desktop environments on Linux, graphical terminal emulators were born, that is, programs that simulate a terminal within a window. Among the best known, Xterm, the most historic, minimal, but still used today. Gnome Terminal, default in Gnome. Console, powerful and customizable terminal in KDE. XFCE 4 Terminal, Mate Terminal, Tilex, Alacrity, many emulators, each with its own style. So before continuing, we need to clarify a fundamental distinction. The terminal is the environment, textual or virtual, that allows you to interact with the system. The shell is the program that runs inside the terminal, which interprets your commands and communicates with the kernel. Without shell, the terminal would be mute. Without terminal, we couldn't communicate with the shell. 
and this binomial shell and terminal is still today the beating heart of every Linux system. But to fully understand why the terminal is so central in the Linux universe, we need to look closely at how the shell works. Yes, because when you open a terminal, whether it's GNOME Terminal, Console Xterm, or any other, what you see is not the terminal itself, but a shell running inside the terminal. And what exactly is the shell? Well, the shell is simply a program that runs in user space, that is, outside the kernel, in the space where all user programs live. Its task is apparently simple but crucial. It receives user input, the textual commands you type, it interprets them, that is, it understands what you want to do, it asks the operating system, specifically the kernel, to execute the requested operation, and finally it shows you the output on screen in the terminal. In practice, it's an interpreter between you and the heart of the system. The shell doesn't have direct access to the computer's hardware or memory. To do anything, it must ask permission from the kernel, and it does so through system calls, fundamental tools that every program in Linux, not just the shell, uses to interact with the operating system. Here are some classic examples. Exec V to execute a program, fork to create a new process, wait to wait for a child process to terminate, read and write to read and write data, open to open files, folders, or devices, the ls command example. You have the terminal in front of you, you write ls and press enter. At this point, what really happens? The shell analyzes the command and understands that you want to execute ls. It looks for the executable file, for example, in slash bin ls. It executes a fork to create a new process. In the child process, it executes an exec slash bin ls to actually launch the command. The kernel takes charge of ls, loads it into memory, and executes it. The output, that is, the list of files in the current directory, is returned to the terminal and shown on screen. All this happens in a fraction of a second. Shell is not equal to kernel. And it's important to emphasize this. The shell is not part of the kernel. It's just a program, like many others, which however has the responsibility of bridging between the user and the system. We could say it's the official translator between us and the machine. In summary, the shell interprets your textual commands. It uses system calls to ask the kernel to execute operations. It's a user program, but with a special role to give you access to the heart of the system in a transparent, powerful, and efficient way. If all this seems fascinating to you, it's because it really is. The terminal is not just a black window with white text. It's a direct access door to the system, and the shell is your guide in this world. It's with this tandem that we communicate, with which we talk to Linux. We talk to it directly, maybe not speaking its same language, but putting ourselves on its same level. Linux is not a graphical interface. Whether we like it or not, it wasn't created for this. It was a university project that then merged with a series of tools created by hackers who in the 70s imagined free software. Everything that came after was an evolution, an adaptation, but everything was built on this fulcrum, the cornerstone of our operating system. In the current Linux landscape, Bash is the most widespread interactive shell. I think I'm not saying blasphemy if I state that it's a de facto standard, but there are exceptions. Kali Linux and Garuda, for example, use ZESH. NixOS and Aria Linux use Fish, while Debian still has a more particular structure. It uses Bash, but for scripts it uses Dash. Dash is often used as slash bin esh for speed reasons. Even if you use Bash interactively, it literally means Debian Almquist shell. Dash doesn't have interactive functions like tab autocompletion, command history, customizable prompts. Default terminals are more fragmented. There's no real standard, although they look very similar. Often distributions use the terminals of their respective desktop environments, so console, GNOME terminal, XFC4 terminal. Some distros like Gentoo and Gwix still use Xterm. Here, I wanted to make this overview that literally escaped me after being scandalized for hearing a Linux user say he's never opened the terminal. God, it's a bit like living on an island with a hundred beautiful women, being the only man present, and still being a virgin at 30 years old. Dude, get a move on.